Hey, it's time for TV Skywriter. I'm here. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. I think we're this is gonna work out really nicely. Wonderful. Okay, okay. And you invited followers. That's nice. That's beautiful. Okay, people are coming in. J1 Thomas, welcome, welcome. This is something kind of for me wild and new. I'm Patricia A. Murray. I usually do my show TV Skywriter on Google Plus. So we are on Google Plus. And I'm talking with James Windsor. And James, you why don't you um, introduce yourself? Uh, hi, everybody. Hopefully you can see me. Yes, it's working on uh, Periscope. So uh, if you don't know me already, uh, my name's James Windsor. I'm at Windsor on Periscope. And I've been marketing online since 1999, based in Nottingham, England. And I love to help uh, through Periscope um, small businesses and home-based business owners to make more money in less time. Wonderful. And again, I'm Patricia A. Murray. I'm a journalist here in Durham, North Carolina, USA. I have a scope every day called Bull City Notes. I simply tell you what's happening in Durham for that day. I intend to use Periscope a lot more in and about town. And today I wanted to talk with James Windsor because I saw one of your scopes. Well, why don't you tell us? Because it was really fun to watch and a little disturbing. It was. It didn't go how I pla how I thought it would go at all. Um, I had the idea the night before. the The local BMW dealership had been featured in our local newspaper, and um, I had the idea of going along reviewing their car the bmw i8 because uh, it's quite an exciting electric car and i thought what i could do is maybe get a member of staff to come along with me we would go around the car and we could answer viewers questions live about the car but <laughs> it did not go that way at all i ended up not only getting thrown out of the bmw pop-up shop that they had there but also i was kicked out of the shopping center wow. purely yeah purely for broadcasting on periscope okay now why didn't a staff member agree because you said that you were wondering if maybe they booted you out because you questioned you know maybe you said something kind of halfway negative Oh, um, let's see, Wise Courtship tells me to tell you hello. Can you see that on your screen as well? Yeah, I'm just focusing on your screen at the moment. Okay, it, it is confusing, folks, so we might miss, uh, I do see the hearts, thank you, thank you. We might miss some comments because. I do have it open here. Yeah, so we're looking, <laughs> yeah, we're looking at both Periscope and Google Plus at the same time. <laughs> So I'm wondering why the staff person didn't agree because you did not start out saying anything negative. No, um, and the replay is still available on my catch if anybody wants to have a look. But I did decide because they were not, uh, well, because I got kicked out, I decided to delete the um, replays from Periscope because I didn't, it did start off as a really positive review because the styling of the car is admittedly really nice. Yeah. Um, it's, it's an amazing looking car. But um, uh, one of the viewers asked a question. They said, can we look under the hood, under the, uh, the bonnet of whatever you call it, of the car? Mm -hmm. So I asked the member of staff and it turned out that you can't get, the bonnet doesn't open on on the i8 it's all engineered in and that's when it took a bit of a negative turn and um, she said to me shouldn't you have permission to film in here and what she didn't realize was I'd already had permission from um, another member of staff they said they wouldn't answer any questions because they didn't know what kind of questions they might be asked but they said it's fine if I film in the car and I film the exterior of the car but then as soon as I started getting into pros and cons that's when they didn't like it and they called security wow wow hmm so how do you think 
it went, I think when you agreed to leave, I was actually very worried and I was glad that you were very calm and that you did nicely agree to leave. Um, do you think you were treated unfairly or, or what? Oh yeah, definitely. Because it was unfair because there was other people who were taking photos and filming and they were left to it. The only thing I was doing differently is speaking about it and broadcasting. Um, so it was totally unfair. The only thing that I wish I did differently was to ask why they were throwing, throwing me out. Okay. Um, now here's how I would have done it. Now I'm a journalist, so I, now I think there's, there's going to be like, oh, um, it's being said that this opens up a whole freedom of speech question, and it does indeed. Now, I'm thinking that there's now three levels of, I don't even know what to call us now, but there's the, to me, the, the top level, the official sanctioned media, okay? Mm -hmm. And then there's people like myself. I'm a journalist. I don't have a degree, however, and my newspaper, which was in print and now is online, uh, I do it all myself. Uh, I'm a citizen journalist. And yeah. then we, now there's something new, the scopers and the live streamers. So I think there's actually three levels. I'm not trying to say the ones on top of one. You know, I'm, tr I'm not trying to make any judgments here. But mm. here's how I would have done it as a journalist. Um, I would have walked in and I would have said, um, you know, good morning. Uh, I just spoke with you know, Jane Smith, and we had a little talk about my doing a little live streaming about this gorgeous BMW, you know, get them on your side, you know. Yeah. And uh, would you like to talk on the air with me about it? Or um, is there someone who could, um, in fact, I would be really humble and I would say, um, I'm not technical. I don't know much about cars. I just know this is gorgeous. But can mm. somebody tell us about the more technical aspects of the car? Yeah. And then I think by then I would have won them over. What do you think? Well, that's kind of what I did. Um, I didn't call them first because from the publicity I'd seen, they were actually encouraging people to come in and have a look at the cars, sit in the cars, etc. So I took that as the invite for me to go along because I, I'm not a journalist. I'm just a average person. And I wanted to share share this with people who may be... You know, on people that watch Periscope, there's a lot of people who are um, bedridden. Um, for whatever reason, they they might not be able to have that experience. So I wanted to just share the experience with people, not as a journalist, but as a private individual. So I went along and I said, um, I broadcast on Periscope and um, I want to just you know, film in the car, then film outside the car, then I'll have live viewers on. I'd like them to be able to ask you questions, then you can answer the questions. I thought that they would be more than willing to do that because it's free publicity for them. But they said, no, you've got to uh, go through BMW head office for that. Uh, and I said, okay, fine. If we can't do the questions part of it, I'll just do the filming of the car. And they said, okay. And you know, I got, got on with it, but then later on, they changed their mind. Hmm. Hmm. I think, like you said, when you, because I did hear you say that, and it was within earshot of the personnel standing behind you, that they weren't very nice or, no. or they were not cooperating. And that probably kind of touched them off a little bit. Um, I'm not saying you were wrong at all, but the the important thing is when you're okay. When I'm in a public space as a as a journalist, I always want them to know who I am, what my intentions are. Now, it could be possible that maybe if I were in your shoes, maybe I would want to point out some of the downsides of of the BMW electric car or whatever that was, but I wouldn't do it within earshot. You know what I mean? I do it later as a review. Yeah. Well, everything I, think that's what I have said, Well, um, everything that I, I'm always conscious that as as somebody on Periscope, it's a conversation. We're not 
um, we're not just giving our point of view mm -hmm. because we've got viewers on there and it's all about you know pros and cons of something it's fine to give your own opinion but it's important to give a balanced review so everything that I'd said was positive about the car so I did purposely try to include some uh, cons as well but uh, yeah it did she did annoy me the way that um, she kind of came came in my face and said shouldn't you have permission to film me I've not given you permission to film me but in fact I, I hadn't given permission for them to film me on CCTV in the shopping centre. So why, why should we get permission to film them when they don't ever ask for permission to film us? I think it's an implied agreement by our walking into the uh, private property that we will be filmed. But ECG, I think that's what I, um, the uh, scoper EECG here, he said that Periscope should be considered like photography. And I agree with that, but the thing is, when you're not a journalist, you don't necessarily know the rules of photography when it comes to being in public spaces. And what I, let me just tell you what I, what I came across online. Okay, this is, okay, someone is saying, Weiss Courtship is saying James is always positive. And you don't need permission to take photos of people, at least in the States. That depends too. Like for example, I was in Duke Gardens um, and I saw uh, two groups of really adorable children coming down the path. And I purposefully turned my camera away and explained to the people that I don't have permission to show these adorable children with the matching uh, blue shirts because I, you know, again, I didn't have parental permission. I probably could have done it. But I think that when it comes to minors and people who don't know that they're going to be filmed, even though they're in a public place, I try not to overstep my bounds. But let me tell you what I, what I came across here. Um, and this, these laws or rules, I think, are almost identical in the United States and the UK. And it says, um, if you're on private property that's generally open to the public, you can um, you know, take pictures and whatnot, and hopefully that includes doing Periscope and other live streaming. It's unless it's ex explicitly prohibited by posted signs, okay? If there's no sign, the property owner or the agent can ask you to stop, you know, what it is you're doing. If the person refuses, they can ask you to leave. And if the person refuses to leave, some jurisdictions would uh, allow you to be arrested for criminal trespass, and even some jurisdictions recognize common law rights to use reasonable force. So, and someone's yeah. asking if scopers are con considered journalists. That's the question, isn't it? Yes, absolutely. That is the question. Um, and it depends as well, um, I guess, whether you are well first of all i when i was filming i did purposely make sure that i avoided filming any other people so i always pointed it at the car there was a kid in the car at one point and somebody asked to see the speedometer so i purposely made sure that this kid was not in because uh, otherwise you have to ask for um you know you need to get them to fill out paperwork to um agree to be in the film but then there's the other aspect are we scoping um is it a profit making scope because uh on that particular one i wasn't promoting anything that i i was making money on um and i wasn't being paid by bmw either so there's all there's loads and loads of questions it really does open a kind of kind of uh, worms as somebody said I really think that um, people who are scoping and doing live streaming of whatever sort should look to see if there are rules or laws for photographers. I think, and I'm not saying that that scopers are journalists. What what you have to keep in mind is that the police, the security guards, and other personnel are probably not up on the law themselves. So yeah. 
you have to look at it from their point of view. They're going to view you as a photographer. And I actually mm -hmm. um, witnessed a scope where someone was on an airplane and the flight attendant asked what they were doing and were they online and they couldn't do that. And yeah. he was trying to explain, this isn't, you know, there, there are people here, I'm talking to them. And mm. it really, they went around in circles a bit. But I, I think what we need to do as scopers or anyone dealing with high tech, you need to, to stay up on the law because you're going to be treated by the existing law. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so if you're, for example, you can be on public property and you can film or scope or take pictures of anything on public property. But when you turn your camera to something private, then you're, it's, it's iffy. I mean, technically you can do so, but you can't aim it at a bedroom or a bathroom. And in this country, you have to be careful about government buildings, bridges, and airports. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, this is a good point. Somebody, somebody else mentioned that maybe, be it maybe I was casing the joint out, and that's that might be why they got a bit. Because this car is worth a hundred and twenty thousand pounds. That's about, I don't know, something like two hundred thousand wow. dollars. So, pretty expensive car. Maybe they were concerned about security. <laughs> I have to say though, James, one thing I noticed that would have disturbed me if I were security guard you now i'm not criticizing but i am saying that you circled that car incessantly yeah. it was it was a cool effect but i think that would have been very disturbing to someone who was wondering what is this man doing because yeah. it's not like you were standing there just saying this is the mirror and check out the grill and check out yeah. the, you were walking around it you know, you were circling it for quite a while. It and it looked cool, but I don't think it like that. No, um, the thought never crossed my mind. I I just wanted to give people a view of all around the car. I was asking people what they would like me to look at. Uh, I think because my internet connection was not great, I didn't get a lot of comments, and it did get disconnected the first time I, I attempted it. So I was I was in there a long time. I don't know how long exactly, um, but yeah, I certainly overstayed my welcome <laughs> on that occasion. Well, maybe. Well, mommy sense said I don't know if you see it on your screen as well, but she said that um, the only difference was that you were talking as opposed to just filming. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and as you go into that shopping center, there's no sign that says that you can't film in there. So if that's the case, they they definitely should put a sign saying no, no um, photography, no video allowed. Hmm, that's a good point. That's a good point. Um, maybe they learned a lesson too. Hopefully, they looked into it to see if you were indeed in the wrong, because as it says here, um, you can do so unless you're explicitly prohibited by posted signs. You might find out the next time you go there, there might be a huge sign on display saying no photography. I don't know. But again, someone did point out that you were the only person who was stopped. I'm guessing number one is because you were circling. Number two, you were talking. They're probably wondering who the heck is he talking to? They might yeah. not even be aware of live streaming apps. They're probably thinking this guy is scoping out the place and he's talking to his accomplice. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Number three, I mean, you were very, thank God you were calm and nice about it. But, oh, someone, you know, this is the second person, Ryan, um, Parent Dome. Follow him if you want to keep your kids safe on the Internet. But he was pointing out that some states point out that you have to have, if you're doing audio, that all parties have to be in agreement. And I did read somewhere today that there's a big difference between just photography and and someone's saying that you could have been just talking on the phone. Yeah, but it was obvious that he was filming, obviously. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, he wasn't doing this, right? So, so um, oh shoot, what was I saying? Um, right, Ryan was pointing, Ryan Miller was pointing out that there, I lost my train of thought. Um, there's a difference between just filming and, and, and talking. 
in certain states, both parties or all parties have to be in agreement. And I know in some jurisdiction, I don't know about the, in the UK, but in the USA, um, when it comes to audio, they try to, when they want to stop you, they point out that the audio is a problem because they're worried about terrorist activities. Yeah. Well, that terrorist argument is used for all sorts of purposes in the UK as well. Um, I think uh, we, we do need to find out more about this because when I've been watching the TV news in the UK, sometimes we see people who are uh, being filmed, they're on, they're on the news and they say they don't want to be filmed and they're trying to cover up their face with things but the TV news still put them on TV, they don't blur the face, and um, they're obviously on TV against their will. So um, if it can happen on the TV news, why can't it happen on Periscope? Well, I don't think that's right. Of course, it depends on what they're filming. But in, in, in what I do, there, there are two what I call um, sensitive groups here, at least in North Carolina, that I'm very mindful of uh, when I'm taking pictures and when I'm doing video, that is Hispanics and that's Muslims. And I always ask permission, and, and well, I'll say number, the third group, children, plain children. I mm. always ask permission. If I see a cute kid or a kid doing something really adorable, I, I ask, where's your mom? You know, can I ask your mom, you know, if I can take your picture? And they'll say, yeah, she's right over there. And so I never just um, photograph a kid or like I said, Hispanic. Some, uh, this might be a sensitive subject, but some people who are Spanish speaking in this country, and I should point out Polish speaking as well, many of them are illegal. I shouldn't say illegal, I should say undocumented. And mm. it's not cool to photograph them because they could get in huge trouble. Wow. All right. Same for Muslim. Now, I think it's, um, I can't remember, but there's an actual law. In, um, in in the Islamic faith, I don't know. But I do know you have to be very careful about uh, filming them. I know they prefer, if you're going to take their picture, that their faces not be shown. So it might be okay to show them doing something like from the side or whatever. Um, and as far as children, I always, I don't care what the race or ethnicity is. If it's a child, I always ask permission. So you have to be very mindful. I don't like it when television news just, film people willy-nilly, um, I always like to ask permission. I know they, they feel that, you know, they're, they're in charge, they're the news, they're, you know, they can do what they want, but I feel that it's better to respect people's rights and, and their wishes, unless, of course, they're criminals. Yeah, well, in, that, in the case that I saw on the TV, the guy was convicted of something, so I don't know if that changes it in, in the law. Uh, I'm not an expert in law, I must point out. I know nothing about it. It's just that this experience has uh, brought it to the forefront, for, forefront of my mind. Uh, the reason that I did scope in public was um, I think that the first hurdle people have when they scope in is first of all pressing that start, bu start broadcast button is very scary for, for new scopers. Um, so the first thing is to overcome that fear in the comfort of your own home and then once you build up enough courage or enough experience and you feel comfortable enough with it the next step is then to take it outdoor and outdoor scopes are awesome people love the different background image um, some of the top scopers in the world do outdoor scopes like euro maestro jeff goldberg um, there's there's quite a few aren't there that do these outdoor type of scopes so it's very very entertaining to scope in different places but we need we do need to know first of all what are the legalities and then if you encounter problems like I did what is the best way of handling them in the future I think I should have I should have spent more time asking them what their problem was um, and then, well no, I think that would have been considered antagonistic um, I'm just saying that just as a person who who watched it with from a journalist point of view, I think it's always um, it's always best to to me to back off unless you can afford to be arrested. It's always best, in my opinion, to back off 
And I mean, you do know, I mean, I, listen, I watched a video in the UK where a policeman told a photographer that that was his street and that he could not photograph, um, take any pictures. He took the guy's camera. You cannot do that. No, if she touched my, she touched my phone, that security guard. There was no police involved in my incident. Um, <laughs> The, the the private security guard from the shopping center actually put her hand on my camera as though she was trying to take it um which was quite annoying uh i think she did that twice um so i didn't give her permission to touch my property just as that she didn't give me permission to film her but my argument is still the same how can they film us without our permission and we for some reason, we don't have the right to film them. It should work both ways. Well, I think it, well, this sounds fair, except when we are on the streets, um, many of our streets have cameras, um, yeah. many of our buildings and, I don't know, uh, airports and whatever, they all have cameras. It's kind of implied consent. When we know we're shopping, we know there's cameras around, and it's kind of like we know it and it's, um, if we don't want to shop there, then we will shop online or somewhere else. But I think it's implied consent. And someone did ask why, if you were a key holder in that building, were you asked to leave? Yeah, I checked this afterwards and apparently they had no right to ask me to leave. Um, but at the time, I thought that I would just go along with it because I knew that I could just go out that exit and come back in another exit uh, entrance. So I mean, they didn't they didn't know who you were. Right. I mean, they didn't know that you are a key holder. Right. I mean, there's no way for them to know that. Right. No, that's right. Yeah. So I, I guess if you had told them that maybe I don't know. I don't know if that would have made a difference. I just think that they were ticked off and they just wanted you out of there. And I'm glad you acquiesced and left because I would have hated to see you get arrested or whatever. Um, the law is with you. However, they can still do to you what they want. Um, it's illegal to touch or take a camera. It is illegal to delete photos or or footage in the UK. And wait, someone's saying no, not in the, U in the UK, they're classed as public property. They might be referring to something else, but no, even in the, in the UK or the USA, you cannot take a person's camera. You cannot delete photos. Um, they can't force you to delete anything. Um, they cannot search your camera without a warrant. So you have to either agree or ask to be arrested or whatever um, in order for them to do what they have to do and just take it in court, take it to court rather. Um, I don't know, but I'm glad you backed off because I would have hated to see you get arrested or mistreated, even if yeah. you were in the right. The, um, the only regret I've got is um, kind of jumping to the conclusion that they were going to throw me out because they never said that. Um, I was kind of the first person to say that because I knew I could tell where it was heading. So if it happens again, I'm sure it will then what I'll do is um, I'll just ask more questions and I'll try to stay calm and um, I will I will let them get to the point where they're going to call the police because that didn't happen on this occasion. So next time I'm, I'm going to hold my ground more because I think we do have the right as citizens to, to make Periscope videos and you know, as long as we're not doing anything wrong, which I wasn't on that occasion, we should have the right to film and broadcast, um, you know, most things. So next time I'm going to hold my ground more and I've had tremendous support from people on Periscope and on Twitter about this. Uh, I'm hoping to get an apology from BMW and hopefully the um, shopping center will send an apology as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, until till it happens again, I probably won't know how I will react because in the heat of the moment, it is so hard to stay calm and collected because they get in your face and, you know, they're so officious and the way that they're dressed, it makes them look almost like they're, they're police. So it's it's hard not to get 
taken in by their appearance and their behavior. I agree with you. Um, well, what I would say is this. Here in the USA, there's been a lot of instances of police brutality. So there have been lots of brochures circulating, a lot of people and organizations um, putting together brochures and information pieces and YouTube videos for um, for young people, well, people in general, but especially young people, especially people of color, and how to deal with the police, okay. what to say. Um, and one phrase that is very important for absolutely everyone who's stopped by the police is, am I, am I free to go? Mm. And if you are indeed free to go, turn on your heel and get the heck out of there. Don't say anything else except maybe thank you and just leave if you think you're about to be arrested that's the most important phrase you can ever say to the police and that is or one of the most important that is am i free to go but what i'm saying is there are a lot of brochures and information pieces being um, distributed throughout the usa because of instances of police brutality and very questionable practices so i'm thinking that maybe someone and i'd be happy to volunteer should um consider looking into the rules for uh, scopers and live streamers, I think that we probably would come for now under the jurisdiction of uh, journalism and uh, photography, perhaps. I think the uh, official media would probably not like that. But just, just realize the police, they're not going to curl up with a, a, you know encyclopedia or uh, rules of law or whatever. Um, at night and trying to figure out the distinction between photographers and scopers. I know they're not going to. So just assume that they're going to treat you as they would any photographer or any journalist and, and take it from there. Yeah, well, if anybody does find out, especially um, I'm interested in the UK law. So if anybody can tweet me if they find out anything about that, I would really appreciate it because I do scope in public regularly, so I'm sure I'm going to come into some kind of trouble very soon. <laughs> so I would like to know the best way to deal with that for sure. Well, I would suggest if you're going to be uh, in a, I think, what was that called? A pop-up store? The BMW yeah. store? Yeah. So I guess what I would have done, again, um, consider this. Uh, walk up to the person, the security person, and say, I got permission from, you know, Joe Smith at the office um, to show off this really excellent car and and just see see what they say. I think it would be much better than just going ahead and filming and then um, having them confront you. I think if you walk right up to them and say, I'm going to be doing a really cool uh, live streaming session showing people this this cool car, I think they'd have a, bit, a different attitude, a better attitude. Yeah, you're absolutely right, you know. And in hindsight, the, um, the reaction I got from them right at the beginning should have been enough to put me off doing it. Because uh, I, I didn't get a nice welcome from the beginning. So I should have just um, decided not to do it. Because later on that day, I went into another local business, um, had the same approach, and I was welcomed with open arms, and it went really, really well. They were happy to answer questions. So I think on some occasions you you will be you will get a good reception, and on some you won't. So where you don't get a good reception, don't persist with it like I did. <laughs> um, instead, just walk away. All, all the more reason to walk up to the person from the beginning. And someone pointed out that these are security guards are dressed up like police and having authority problems. But be that as it may, they are representing authority, even though they might not have the same authority as a military officer or police officer. But um, as far as the person in the room with the most authority, might be the security guard. Just saying, because he's hired by the property owner. Yeah, the the security guard only turned up right at the end, though. I I mean, when I went up to the member of staff and asked for permission in the first place, I I didn't get a good reception from them. They were 
they were like oh you've got to speak to bmw head office we can't answer any questions because people could ask anything so then i should have just walked away um i shouldn't have in hindsight i don't think i should have kind of made a compromise and and just did my own filming mm -hmm. if i now i can tell that the the reaction i got right at the beginning was not good so i shouldn't have given them any publicity but i'm glad it's happened because hopefully my experience will help other people um to handle it maybe better when when it happens to you i think you handled it quite well but one thing i have to say though when i interview people most of the time they allow me to just ask them whatever question you know, I, I want to. Sometimes, however, if I'm inter interviewing someone like the police chief or the mayor or whatever, they want to know what I'm going to ask first. And I yeah. hate writing down questions because I, I'm i a, I'm a jazz fan. I like to just go with the flow, you know, but they're not used to that. No. So I compromise by not, I'll, I'll tell them, I will ask questions about this. You know what I mean? So so they're not totally off guard. I won't. I I don't read my questions word for word, but I might say I'm going to ask you about that incident that happened on June 19th, and I'm what I'm going to ask you um, will have to do with this and that. Yeah. Okay. But I can understand the security guard wondering what in, what in the world, um, or rather the staff member asking what kind of question you were going to ask. I can't imagine. I mean, it's BMW. It's a car. It's not like a security you know what i mean it's not like you're i don't know what i'm trying to say but it's just a car i don't see what the big deal is however it was a big deal to them mm. it, it was crazy. Tell, tell me about the engine you said it's somehow you can't view it you can't rate there's no bonnet or hood to raise that's right <laughs> and they i don't think they liked that being brought Thank up you. <laughs> um, the bonnet is just, they say, engineered in, so it doesn't lift up like a normal one. There's no user serviceable parts. Uh, I don't think they liked me drawing attention to that. And I, I never knew that that would happen. I've never heard of that. I mean, actually, that could be considered a cool feature in that you don't have to check, obviously, you don't have to check your oil, I guess. I don't know. Maybe someone, be, maybe someone has to be hired to check your oil if there maybe there isn't oil i don't mm. know I don't all know. i know is i will not be buying a bmw ever again until i unless i get an apology <laughs> well i won't either let's take that vow of course i can't afford a bmw so. <laughs> and to tell you the truth i'm taking public transportation at this point because my little vehicle is inoperable right now and sitting in front of my house so so my next vehicle probably won't be a bmw <laughs> i really enjoyed talking with you james um are there any other points that you wanted to ask about um as far as using or actually let's let's ask um our viewers if they have some questions on dealing with scoping in public and taking pictures in public let's see what they have to say let's see let's see Ask us a question to see what you got. Because they've been having a nice conversation, a uh, side conversation, which I kind of glimpsed at. So any questions? Or has anyone else had a problem dealing? Oh, so where are you going next, James? Next, I have another interview with Steve G. Pickering. Oh, but... Uh, you mean where will I be scoping from? Yeah. Oh, um, I've not actually planned it. I normally do like on location scopes from Thursday to Sunday, and then Monday to Thursday I'm scoping from here. I work from home. I do too. And actually, I love Periscope because I've seen things that I will never see in, in person. The Egyptian pyramids, um, the Easter Island, you know, those big heads on the on Easter Island. I saw those yeah. um, pyramids in um, 
think it was Mexico or Costa Rica, I can't remember. I've been to Puerto Rico. I've walked the streets of, of uh, Tehran. I've visited Hong Kong. I mean, Periscope is awesome. It is. I really it is love it. And I hope to do some more on location. I'm gonna watch your scopes and learn how to do it. I did do um, a tour of Duke Gardens last week and I was troubled with the pixelation. I, I don't know what that was about. Someone suggested scoping a government building from a public sidewalk. Good luck with that. <laughs> you will be visited by a, a police officer pretty quick. It's maybe I could get, maybe I could get, sorry, maybe I could go to London and scope about the, um, the MI5 building. <laughs> what is MI5? That is the um, British spy agency. I don't suggest you do that. A bit like the CIA, I think. What is that cool building they showed on Doctor Who? The um, it's that it's a tall building. Uh, um, uh, the doctor took a motorcycle up the up the building. Um, watch Doctor Who. It starts that, with the letter S. Um, it's in London. It might be called, um, I think it may be the Shard. That's it. Yeah. I would love to go in there. If you could take <laughs> yeah. a tour of this, because that looked really cool on Doctor Who. I love Doctor Who as well. The new series is fantastic, isn't it? Well, here's the thing. I have a good friend who was introduced. I introduced him to um, Doctor Who with number, let's see, uh, nine. So Christopher Eccleston, Eccleston. And he yeah. enjoyed his, you know, his coolness with his leather jacket and all. Then I took him up through 10, 11, and now the new one. And then two days ago, I said, okay, we've run out of episodes. So we're gonna go back to the original 1963 first episode of Doctor Who. And I was afraid he wasn't gonna like it. He loved it. So yeah. I just, if you could, you know what would be really cool is to visit sites that we've seen on the show on mm. Periscope. Yeah, true. <laughs> that would be really cool. Now, some of it's in Wales, and I don't know enough about um, Great Britain to know whether Wales is even close to where you are. Yeah, it's a little bit tricky to get there because the roads are um, not very fast. But I'm lucky because I'm based in Nottingham, which is the home of Ro the Robin Hood tales. And I okay. scoped last night from an inn that is the oldest inn in, uh, it might be oldest in the world. It was from, it was built in the 1100s. So like, um, nearly a thousand years ago. That is so wild. I mean, the ghost stories that you were telling us and whatnot. See, ghost stories from Great Britain and Europe are so much better than, well, I can't say so much better, more mysterious because of the history. Whereas anything that's 200 years old in the USA is like, ooh, amazing, 200 years old. But. Exactly. But yeah, I mean, 1100s, that's really hard to imagine. I really enjoyed that show, your scope. Oh, thank you. It's just a shame that the internet was so patchy. The quality of it was terrible. And I think the catch recording is better quality than the Periscope one, the Periscope replay for some reason. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, if you take... Um, suggestions and, and requests. Um, I think we'd have a whole lot of fun watching your scopes from, you know, here, how far, okay, England looks small on the map, all right? But for your purposes, how far can you go comfortably in, in your country, in one day trip? It's possible to get to London and back. So London is like um, two, about two hours from where I live. Um, but then again, there's so many people already in London that you can easily, you know, using the map, you can you can find people in London. So probably there's an, enough for me to go out in Nottingham because um, people love the tales of Robin Hood, don't they? So, Absolutely. 
Now, here's another suggestion, if you don't mind. Um, a lot of people are showing the, the big cities of, you know, London and whatnot. But a lot of us really love to see gardens and small towns. I'm from Chicago originally. So I'm very fascinated when I see an animal like a cow or a horse. That's To me, that's very exciting. Yeah. You know, oh, well, um, I'll, I'll do more of those kind of scopes. If anybody wants to tweet me as well with any suggestions, um, then I'll be happy, happy to do that. I've got to I've got to leave in a couple of minutes to do my next scope that's going to be with Steve G Pickering. Oh, okay. I met him online. Yeah. Yes, yeah, you mentioned that. Yeah, he, he does blabs where he teaches English. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And so, ask, he's got a wonderful ear for, for dialects. So ask him to, to imitate uh well, I, I won't tell you what to ask him, but I'll just yeah. say he's a wonderful ear. You're right. He did an impression of me. Really? <laughs> yeah. It was eerie. Oh, I hope to. I hope he does that during your school. I'm, I'm going to let yeah. you go now because I know you need to prepare and all that sorts. So I want to thank you so much, James Windsor, for being on the show. Thank you so much, Patricia. It's been amazing. So... Um, yeah, hopefully we can do another one again soon. Absolutely. And I think more people might do this this combination dual app Google Plus Periscope because it's really cool in that it'll it automatically automatically goes to YouTube. Uh, of course, what I usually do is I, I download the original show and then I add credits at the end and then re-upload it and get rid of the original. So that's one thing that I do. And then of course it's on catch. Yeah. And Periscope.tv, right? Yeah, that's, it's fantastic. I look forward to watching the replay. And thank you, everybody, for watching. This has been really fun and historic for me. And me as well. This is the first one I've done. Excellent. So I'll say ciao for now. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And what time is it there? It's 3.20 p.m. here, Eastern United States. What time is it in England? 8.20 p.m. Wow. So it's dark already, right? Yes. It what, is. Time does it get, what time does it get start getting dark there? Uh, hmm, probably about five, five or six, I think. Our clock's just changed recently. So yeah, same a, here. So I forget. Um, they say fall backwards. So I'm thinking <clears throat> sun, it's, it's cloudy today, but I think the sunset will be six-ish probably. Something like that. But anyway, let me let you go because I know you're busy. <laughs> really enjoyed you guys uh, watching. That was really fun. And I'm sorry if we for, we missed out on some comments. It's hard to look. I've been trained to look into the camera, which means oh. I'm not looking down at the comment. So I know I missed a few. It is tricky. Yeah. So thanks again, James. And I'll see you real soon. You're very welcome. Thank you, Patricia. See Absolutely. you soon. Okay, everybody. See you later. <laughs>